Hey, my name is Thomas and today I brought something peculiar, a 300mm f5.6 mirror lens adapted to my Fuji X-E3. So this thing is called a Honeymax made in Japan. Honeymax, of course, that was just one of all these uh, import-export companies. Uh, this one's funded by Jack Hannes in Australia in 1945. But uh, many other companies like that exist that just bought uh, lenses from China or Japan from various factories and then sold them throughout the world. So I've seen this lens as a Spirotone and uh, many other names. Uh, it's a 300 millimeter f5.6 and it's a mirror design that means the lens itself is like maybe six centimeters long only. Uh, all this is just adapter. Um, it comes with a so-called T2 mount as many of these lenses do. Uh, T2 is a standard similar to M42 but different and it's designed that you always use an adapter for your actual camera. So in this case I've got a T2 Fuji X mount adapter on it. Um, being a mirror lens means there is no aperture built in. This thing has a fixed aperture. Again, 5.6 is what they claim. Uh, the diameter is a bit more. It's more like f5, but it's got this huge uh, thing, the central obstruction in it for the second mirror because light is folded sort of like a Z uh, before it reaches the sensor. It's an ingenious design, uh, but it comes with a lot of, uh, well, ifs and that's what we're going to find out now. There is not a lot uh, to say about the handling because this lens has got focusing mechanism and that's it. Um, due to the T2 adapter now the marking sits here, but uh, all T2 adapters come with these small set screws so you can loosen the screws, put the marking here and tighten again. I didn't do that. Um, as you see it focuses down to 2.5 meters which is not that bad for a 300 millimeter lens. Um, the focusing means that the rear mirror, which is fixed here, and the front mirror, which sits here, that they move towards each other. Um, and that means that the quality of the image will suffer when you focus close, because uh, the optical design is designed for one specific distance between the two mirrors, but if you change that distance, you will have a, a compromise in terms of optic quality. And um, apart from that, you see here the huge central obstruction. Um, the lens comes with a 67 millimeter filter threads. So basically it's an F5 lens, but if you uh, counter for that big thing in here, it's maybe more 5.6 or maybe even a bit worse. You never really know. Uh, again, this lens is not about optical quality. Don't buy this lens if you want good optical quality. Uh, back in the day, uh, they were bought because they were so compact. I guess that private investigators would buy lenses like that. Uh, the quality wasn't an issue, but getting very close uh, with a very small setup, that was the idea. And here you see the T2 mount. I can unscrew it. I have to edit this part. So here is the thread. Uh, T2 is actually uh, M42 diameter, but it's a, a different 
thread. So you can't screw it on an M42 camera, you will damage the threads, even though it looks very similar. Uh, these lenses have a very bad reputation when it comes to optical quality and yes, there is a reason for it. The images are soft and there is no contrast whatsoever. Yeah, you really need a digital camera to make this thing uh, perform because if you take a picture in RAW afterwards, you can just contrast colors and everything until it looks reasonably well. And uh, the second thing is focusing is hypercritical. The tiniest amount of you know, moving the focus ring already means the image is completely blurred for a reason. I don't know why they are so uh, sensitive here. But anyway, I'm going to shoot... Uh, if you <laughs> There's a statue. And I'm going to shoot that from here. And uh, use your viewfinder, that's better. You have a bit more stability and use the focus loop and use focus peaking, everything together. And then set shutter speed to two thousandths of a second to avoid any motion blur. And that's it. These mirror lenses are known for their donut bokeh because of the black central obstruction. You know, the bokeh balls are basically uh, a picture of the front lens element and here it's got a big central obstruction so you get a donut. Um, it's a love or hate thing. In many shots it looks very harsh and very weird but sometimes it makes for a great, great special effect. As you will see in many of my sample shots, I put in a before and after pictures. So you really need to use a raw converter and then adjust uh, sharpness, especially highlights and shadows, contrast, clarity and saturation and vignetting. <laughs> That's what I did. And then these images look quite good. Uh, that also shows if you, if you shot these lenses analog, you will never get good results because they are just without contrast and the heavy vignetting. It was very hard to correct these things in an analog shot. So I reckon if you're using a lens like this, a modern digital camera is really a blessing. Time for a verdict? Uh, well, if you're looking for a sharp, small telephoto lens, walk away, get a, a kit zoom lens instead. For Fuji, for example, get the 50 to 230 zoom lens with autofocus, with stabilization, much, much better image quality. Don't buy this lens. If you're looking for any kind of image quality in, you know, the usual terms like sharpness, contrast or whatever, don't buy this lens. Uh, yes, it is super compact but that's the only thing to it. Apart from that, it's just fascinating. I mean, uh, <laughs> incidentally, this is 
67 millimeters diameter. That's actually HO scale compared to the Mount Paloma uh, mirror telescope in America, which is a five meter. So uh, if you've got a model train layout, you can use this to uh, make a model of the Mount Paloma. Uh, but kidding aside, uh, the peculiar optics can be great fun. Uh, there's a lot of character. You have to master it. You have to have uh, fun and joy with this lens. If you don't, then it's the wrong buy. That's all to it. Um, I reckon every photographer maybe has a mirror lens somewhere in his attic. Um, take it out just for fun. Uh, don't expect anything, just experiment. That's what this lens is great for. So that's it for today. I hope you found this interesting, uh, entertaining, maybe even useful. If you did so, then please leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet, uh, and hit the small bell button for notifications. And if you've got any questions or comments, uh, just write something down in the comment section below. I love to read all your comments and I will happily answer every single one of them. So live long and prosper, stay safe, uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.